guys, Dave Carpenter with HowToStopSnoring.org, and today I wanted to talk about how sleep disorders can affect mental health. Now about 10 to 18 percent of the general population uh, has a diagnosable sleep disorder. But when we talk about a psychiatric setting, those who are being treated for depression, anxiety, or ADHD, it's up to 90 percent of those people have a diagnosable sleep disorder. Now it was originally thought that the sleep disorder was a symptom of the mental health issue, of the depression, of the anxiety, etc. Uh, it turns out that a lot of times the sleep disorder can not only make the mental health issue worse, but it can also be the cause of the mental health issue. So we're going to explore that in the video today and I uh, hope you find it uh, helpful and interesting. So how does sleep affect mental health? Well, it interrupts the sleep cycle and the sleep cycle you can think of in two phases. There's something called quiet sleep and this is the beginning of a sleep where your body slowly gets into a deeper and deeper sleep. So your breathing slows, your body temperature uh, cools down and your heart rate slows. It turns out that it's because sleep disorders interrupt the normal sleep cycle. And there's two phases to the sleep cycle and there's different parts of each phase. And we're just gonna go over them briefly real quick. The first phase of sleep is called the quiet phase. And this is the phase of sleep where you go into a deeper and deeper sleep as time goes on. So your breathing slows down, your heart rate slows down, your body temperature goes down, and you're just falling into a deeper and deeper sleep. This phase is important for your immune system. This is when it gets repaired and regenerated for the next day. Now the second part of sleep is called the REM phase, and that stands for rapid eye movement. Most people have heard of that. This is the phase of sleep where people dream. And in this phase of sleep, this is very important for the psychological health. And if we're not getting So the second phase of sleep is called the REM phase, and that stands for rapid eye movement. Most people have heard of it. And this is the phase of sleep where we start dreaming. Uh, it's also the phase of sleep where our blood pressure actually goes up, our heart rates go up, and our breathing rates go up. And they're really close to being normal when we're awake during the day. And that's because we're dreaming and we are acting out these dreams in our head. So this REM phase of sleep is very important for psychological and emotional health. It's also very important for concentration and learning. So if this part of the sleep gets interrupted, it can be very harmful. And this is the part of the sleep that we're concerned with, with anxiety, depression, and ADHD. So although scientists are still trying to figure out the exact mechanism of how this works, we do know that when we interrupt our sleep cycles, it plays havoc with the neurotransmitters within the brain, our hormone levels, and all of that can amplify the symptoms and effects of psychological disorders. So it's very important. So that's kind of a, a quick relationship uh, between so now let's talk about depression um, so now let's talk about depression approximately 65 to 80 percent of people with depression also have a sleep disorder. So now let's talk about depression. Approximately 65 to 80 percent of people with depression also have a sleep disorder. And as we talked about earlier, and as we talked about earlier, 
anything that disrupts the sleep cycle can make the symptoms of the disorder worse. And it stands to reason, right? I mean, we wake up and we're not rested, we're tired, we're cranky, uh, we're a little more sensitive to outside stimulus. That can add to our depression and anxiety. And as we talked about earlier, anything that disrupts the sleep cycle can make the symptoms of the disorder worse. And it stands to reason, right? I mean, we wake up and we're not rested, we're tired, we're cranky, uh, we're a little more sensitive to outside stimulus. That can add to our depression and anxiety. Now, most people with depression suffer from insomnia, but about 20 to 25% suffer from obstructive sleep apnea. And it really doesn't matter what the cause is for your sleep disruption. It's just the sleep disruption itself that's going to cause additional problems. So some of the symptoms of depressions, so, so some of the symptoms of depression you should be looking out for. So there are a lot of symptoms of depression. Some people have all of them. Some people only have one. Start having any of these. So the symptoms of depression will vary. Uh, there's a lot of them, but if you do notice that you have any of these symptoms, you should talk to your doctor immediately. The first one is feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, or sadness. If you have thoughts of suicide or death. Loss of things that once interested you. Problems concentrating. Forgetfulness. Loss of, libid loss of libido or no interest in sex. If you have thoughts of suicide or death. Loss of things that once interested you. Loss of things that once interested you. Problems concentrating. Problems concentrating. Forgetfulness. Loss of libido loss of libido or no interest in sex. If you notice forgetfulness, loss of libido, loss of libido or no interest in sex. If you notice a change in your weight, loss of libido or no interest in sex. If you notice a change in your weight, if you notice a change in your weight or your appetite that comes on sudden. If you have daytime sleepiness or loss of energy, and if you notice you have insomnia, talk to your doctor if you have one or more of these symptoms and they can evaluate you. And, the, and so exactly how does sleep affect depression? It's a vicious cycle. With a sleep disorder, your sleep's disrupted, you wake up tired and fatigued, and that can cause concentration problems, forgetfulness, low energy. This can in turn lead to exercising less, which can mean you'll, this can in turn lead to exercising less, which can mean you'll gain weight. And because we're sleepy during the day, we can take naps and that can make it actually harder to fall asleep at night, making the sleep disturbance worse. So that, as you can see, this is a vicious cycle where the symptoms of both sleep deprivation and depression feed on each other and make it worse. So some key points to remember here, sleep disorders are more likely to affect those with psychiatric issues than those in the general population. Sleep disorders can raise the risk of developing psychological 
problems. And by treating the sleep disorder, it may help alleviate some of the symptoms of the psychological disorder. So now because we're interested in snoring and sleep apnea, let's talk a little bit about how those things can affect depression and how they're related. So both snoring and sleep apnea can affect our sleep cycles and interrupt our sleep. However, sleep apnea is a much more serious problem. Sleep apnea occurs when a person actually stops breathing during the night. And these episodes can last up to 10 seconds at a time. And they can happen hundreds of times a night. And when that happens, people will wake up gasping for air because they're unable to breathe. And you'd think that most people with sleep apnea would know that they're waking up gasping for air, but that's not the case. Most people actually don't even remember waking up. It's only when their partner tells them the next morning that they woke up gasping for air that they're even aware that it happened. The main symptom they, they may have is just tiredness, fatigue, crankiness during the day. So it's important to talk to your partner about whether you're snoring and whether you're waking up in the middle of the night gasping for air. Now those people who don't have a partner that they sleep with, the only symptom may be that you're just tired during the day and that can be a problem from either snoring or sleep apnea. So what you can do is just turn on a recording device. It doesn't have to be a camera. It could be your cell phone and record yourself during the night and you'll be able to hear whether you're snoring, whether you're waking up, gasping for air. If either of those things are happening, you should probably talk to your doctor. However, if you're just snoring, there's a lot of really, really good anti-snoring products on the market today that you can use to stop the snoring before it gets worse and turns into something that you don't want it to turn into. Uh, go ahead and check out our site if you want to check out some of those products. But if you're not breathing and you have episodes and you see or hear yourself waking up gasping for air, that's sleep apnea. You need to see a doctor. They'll do a sleep study, diagnose you, and they can treat it. It's actually very easy to treat, but it needs to be diagnosed and it needs to be treated by a medical professional. So let's talk about a couple of warning signs that you should be aware of. And the first one is heavy snoring. And while not everyone who snores has sleep apnea, you need to talk to your partner. Or as we said earlier, you can record yourself while you sleep on your phone or if you have a camera, whatever, to see if you are actually stopping your breathing, these episodes of apnea, as they're called, can be very dangerous. Uh, but heavy snoring, you want to get taken care of so it doesn't turn into apnea. So heavy snoring is something you want to be aware of. Second warning sign is daytime fatigue. So if you're tired all the time during the day, everybody gets a bad night's sleep once, once in a while. But if you regularly are tired and overly tired and in need of naps during the day, you want to take note of that. Uh, the third symptom is if symptoms of depression are getting worse. So even if you're being treated, you're on medication or you're in therapy or, or whatever, and your symptoms are still getting worse, that may be a sign of an undiagnosed sleep disorder. So you want to talk to your doctor about that. And again, that they'll set you up with a sleep study. And if it is a sleep disorder, it's easy to, uh, to treat, and it's most of the time drug-free, so you'll be able to get relief from the anxiety, depression, ADHD just by treating your sleep disorder without drugs. So bottom line here is that people with depression, anxiety, ADHD, and other mental health issues can have up to an 80 to 90% chance of having a sleep disorder. And if we treat the sleep disorder, it can alleviate the symptoms in those cases. Now, the other important point is if you don't have these disorders now, if you have a sleep disorder, you are at a much higher risk of developing depression, anxiety, or ADHD. So if you do have the sleep disorder, get that treated right away, and we can 
hopefully avoid developing symptoms of anxiety, depression, and ADHD, which can be disabling. So I want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this. Uh, I hope you found it important information and good information. Uh, if you did, go ahead and hit the like button for us right down there. And if you want to know when our next video is coming out, hit the subscribe button and we'll let you know. And if you did find this video helpful with good information on depression, sleep disorders, anxiety, and ADHD, please share it on social media. We're trying to get the message out to help as many people as we can. And your help is greatly appreciated. So hit the share button down below and share it on your favorite platform. Again, thanks for stopping by and taking the time to watch the video. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below or you can always contact us through the website.